What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Dark Waters, and I'm back again dropping another story. This one is a Bigfoot story. Pretty good Bigfoot story. For those of you who are members of the website, you've already heard it because it's been there for a while. For those of you who are non-members, you're going to listen to it now. Also, for those of you who are non-members of the website, the lottery is open. I was supposed to open it this weekend, but I did it already. So head on over, click the button that says Dark Waters Lottery, submit your email address, name and email address, for a chance to win a 30-day membership. For those of you who are going to be like, uh, Dark Waters, I don't want to give you my email address. Listen, I'm doing this because I told y'all the reason why I built the website is because I knew about the censorship. Now you're seeing the second phase of the censorship rollout. And I'm not going to bite my tongue for nobody, baby. It's eventually, it's going to get to the point to where I'm going to say something and they're going to get pissed. Because they've already shadow banned me based on other things I've said. And I'm going through a series of big interviews going into February where I know I'm going to say some things that may be a problem. So, sign up, become a member, or submit your, your name and uh, email address in the lottery and get down with the get down. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to hear this full story, you need to be a member. You're going to need to be a member, baby. Peace. Man, look, I'm tired of people talking about Bigfoots like they're cool. The majority of these people that talk about Bigfoot ain't living nowhere near no damn Bigfoots. Because if you did, you would realize quickly that it's like having a 2,000 pound stalker watching your every move. No, 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 no. To make it even more clear for you, it's like having Mark Chapman outside your house 24-7. Combine that with the fact that my family's business is tomato farming. And now you realize that not only is Mark creepy, but his bitch ass is greedy too. Let's start off with this, the stalking. Yearly, we have migrant workers that work our fields. And every year, a percentage of our workers ghost us. I mean, one day they're at work, the next day they're gone. Now, when this first started to happen, we as an organization were confused because we pay them fair wages. And we only use people that have work permits and we take good care of our people. Now, one of my employees, China Bob, we call him China Bob because for years we couldn't pronounce his name. So finally, he got disgusted with people mispronouncing his name and he told us to call him Bob. Now, combine that with the fact that we have other men who work for us named Bob, it's better to call him China Bob. Just like the black man that works for us is called Black Bob and the white man that works for us is called White Bob. It's just a way of distinguishing who they are. Anyway, China Bob comes to me a few years ago and says, hey, I figured out why our workers are going to work for other farms. Goes on to tell me that we have a yearling that comes on our farm. Now, he goes on to tell me stories about when he was a kid and how they had him in his village and how they had to go out and kill them and how it took a hell of a lot of bullets to kill these things. Now, I need you to understand something about me and the concept of there being a Bigfoot. I knew there was a possibility that something like that existed, but as far as I was concerned, the possibility was about 5%. So as China Bob is telling me this, I'm looking at him like he's done lost his damn mind. We go back and forth talking about this for about five minutes and agree to disagree. But he leaves me with this ominous warning saying, look, you always leave the farm and head home in the middle of the day. If you stick around here at night, like some of the other employees have to do, you will see this thing here on the farm. Now, the following morning, I'm in the office, Black Bob walks in and I spark up the conversation with him saying, hey, have you seen anything weird on the property? He looks at me, what the hell are you talking about, look? And I said, well, have you ever seen anything like a Bigfoot out here? Black Bob goes on to tell me that sometimes when he's out here working late at night, he feels like something is watching him, but he never knew exactly what it was. So I decide the only way to get to the bottom of it is to stick around and see for myself. So picture this, I'm sitting in a chair, leaning back, smoking a cigarette, relaxing. And to paint a picture for you of how a tomato farm is set up, if you imagine being inside of a baseball stadium and you're at home plate, you got the first baseline, the third baseline, 
and then the stadium makes an arc that goes all the way from third base around through left field center field to right field back to the other baseline right that's how our tomato form is set up and then we have our tomatoes planted in tiers that step up every 10 feet so essentially if you're standing there in center field and you look around you're completely surrounded by tomatoes all the way up to 50 feet in the air now like I said, I'm sitting there smoking my cigarette, right? Look up and I see something running. And it's running pretty fast too. It's up high on the fourth tier running behind the tomatoes and it's moving from right field headed to center field. Now listen to me, when I tell you this is about 120 to 130 yards away from me, but it's big. I can see that it's big. So big that I say out loud, what the hell is that? Now understand, I'm not sitting there in complete darkness, but the big lights. The ones that we use to illuminate the crops during harvest time, those were off. So I get up, walk over, turn the switch, and turn those lights on. But with these lights, they don't just come on and flash brightly. They're a lot like football field lights. You turn them on early, and then they kind of warm up. And then next thing you know, it's super bright outside, right? The second the lights click on and the dim lights start to shine, it freezes. Right there in center field. And tries to hide behind the tomato plant. But it's way too big and even though our plants are strung up in the air you can still see this thing standing there and even at that distance i could tell that it was some kind of giant hairy man and then next thing you know a fucking tomato comes flying at me lands at my feet and i need you to think about this understand how far away this creature was and it threw a freaking tomato that landed right at my feet I stand there watching it as it's watching me. Next thing you know, another tomato comes flying at me and lands on the wall right above my head. And for me, it was at that point in time where I had seen enough and I said, fuck it, I'm turning off these lights and going my ass home. The next morning, I get to work early and I find China Bob. He's standing there drinking coffee with Black Bob. And I go on to tell him about the events of the night before. And he starts to laugh at me. I'm talking about bent over at the waist, laughing, saying, I told you so, but you wouldn't believe me. After he's had a good laugh, he says, now that you understand what's going on, I can explain to you, boss, what this thing is costing you. Because that big, giant, hairy monster is eating your tomatoes. From there, China Bob and I go into this discussion of how to get rid of this thing. I tell him, look, maybe we can leave the lights on all night long and that'll keep it away. He says, no, all you're going to do is run up your power bill and it's going to sneak in and still eat your tomatoes. So then I suggest that, look, maybe we just shoot it and get rid of it. He says, no, that's not a good idea because right now all it does is sneak, eat some tomatoes and go on about his business. You don't want to piss this thing off. After going back and forth for another 10 minutes, me making suggestions and him shooting them all down, we decided the best thing to do was leave it alone for now and hopefully it would just go on about his business. But it didn't. The next day, my wife is sitting in a truck on the back side of the property, and she sees it peeking at her from behind a tree. She completely freaks out. Damn, there runs over one of our employees trying to get the hell out of there. Now, understand, our house is on the same property as our farm. And it was like once this thing laid its eyes on my wife, it went into full stalker mode, turning its attention from the farm to my house. Now it's peeping at her through windows and it's gotten to the point to where my wife doesn't even want to be at home alone. Remember, prior to this, I didn't even believe that these creatures existed. So I didn't have the luxury of understanding all of their behaviors. But one night, my wife has some friends over for wine. I leave the house to get some cigarettes. And when I drive back up to the house, I see it standing outside of the house, looking through one of the windows. So instead of pulling into the driveway, I drive past the house and then walk back with my rifle. Now, I'm in the woods across from my house, looking at this thing through my scope, and it looks like a giant, hairy, retarded Shaquille O'Neal, but with these exaggerated features, a bigger head, bigger brow, bigger lips, wider nose, standing there watching them through this little sun window we have at the top of the living room wall. Now, I got this thing in my scope. I could shoot it in its ear, its head. I could hit it in one of its eyeballs if I wanted to. But then it looks over at me, and I swear to you, I'm concealed in pitch black darkness. And this thing is looking at me. I'm like, I used to have a job. Okay, now you know Dark Waters is not about to give it all away for free. Want the rest of this story? 
Go to IamDarkWaters.com and become a member today. Only $4.99 per month gives you access to this library of true horror stories. Become a member today.